Welcome, everyone, most lovely people in the world. Folks, 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 this is the other news that you'll never hear on TV, ever. Today is... Today is the end of August 20th. By the time you guys hear this on 2021, you're probably going to hear this on the 21st, which is Shabbat, which is Saturday. I want to bring some good news after the horrible, horrible day um, that was had yesterday and all this week basically has been just awful because of what is going on with the mess up of Biden's regime in this country of America, the Republic of America, which we need to take back ASAP. Um, folks, I don't know how else to say this. Kudos to Glenn Beck and his Mercury One, the Nazarene Fund. Folks, if you haven't clicked on that and donated, I... I ask you to uh, search engine that I'm going to try and put the link in the description box below it's getting close to Sabbath here in Alaska and so I'm trying to wrap things up here if you haven't donated and you can donate I'm asking you to donate to the Afghanistan fund on the Nazarene fund site from Mercury One right now over the last I, I would say just like three days, he was able to raise $21 million. Right now, um, he has stated, Glenn Beck has stated on his channel tonight, um, the YouTube channel just kicking in of all the news when I got home from work, that uh, about 5,000 people have been rescued from Afghanistan because of the money that is being doled into this. And what a shame, what an absolute disgrace and I don't mean this to be rude or undermining or anything like that because Glenn Beck is literally shining a light in the darkness right now and glory to Yahweh in heaven. But if someone so little as Glenn Beck can raise enough money and start getting people out by the thousands because of his little bit of effort and with all of the people who lovingly love our brothers and sisters in Christ are getting people out and our government can't do a thing, not even lift one finger to save a human soul over there right now. I don't know what to say. I just don't know what to say. The words should already be in your mouths. They should already be in your heads of what is wicked and what is godly right now. Praise Yahweh in heaven that he has answered your prayers not only on this channel, but all of the channels who are striving, striving and striving to pray and fast and bring our prayers and our concerns for our brothers and sisters, for innocent souls that are about ready to be sacrificed to the Taliban and their ungodly God, Allah. Folks, wickedness is running rampant. Will you open your eyes, open your ears and hear the voice of the Lord saying, repent, repent, repent for the time is at hand. Folks, it is at the doorstep. It is in the threshold. It is about to take place. The Antichrist is about ready to raise to power, folks. Can you feel it? Can you feel the Ten Kings rising in the world right now? Can you feel it? Can you feel the genocide and the beheadings of our brothers and sisters in Christ all over the earth in every nation? Can you feel it? I want to be very clear about my feelings in all of this. And I know that my video that I put out earlier today about the sacrifice of uh, the innocent souls, the human souls in Afghanistan right now, I literally believe what I put out there that they have just, it was a bloodlust. They were sacrificing human souls and Christians have rose up all over the nations of the earth, praise Yahweh, the most high God in heaven, that he has sent power 
and authority and the ability to get the job done. If we didn't stand up right now, folks, if our prayers were not being heard in heaven right now, none of this would have started taking place. The Germans, the English, the whoever else was there were already actively getting their people out. And Biden is just like shrugging, going, I don't know what to do. Like, it's okay. You know, that was four or five days ago. But instead, brave men and women of Yeshua HaMashiach stepped up to the podium. They had the resources in play. They had the voice and they used it. And things are happening and our brothers and sisters are being saved. Praise Yah. Be very lifted up in praise and joy for Yahweh this Sabbath, folks. What a blessing this has been. So I want to be very clear that from what I understand Glenn Beck is doing, and this is happening in other nations as well, okay, there is little sideline efforts for people to get these people out of Afghanistan right now. There is a major coordination going on, and they're literally getting people in and out on rotating flight lists. The flight goes in, they pick up 300, they get them out. They go back in, they, you know, they go drop them off wherever they're going in disclosed secret locations right now, and they're going back in, they're picking up 300 more, and they're getting out is a constant rotation right now of getting people out of Afghanistan. And your continued prayers throughout Shabbat is most welcome at this time, folks. Keep praying. I am so grateful to serve a wonderful and benevolent God like Yahweh that he is willing to look past our wickedness and our horribleness in order to save people who may not be repentant, but they may be after all of this is said and done, folks. So let's keep those souls also in our prayers. The media may be silent about all of this. This is taking place behind the scenes, but I want you to know, and I want you to share this, that God is working with us all, through us all, and it is only because of our diligence towards Him and the Word of God that these things, these godly, wonderful things are getting done, and it's because of you, you who are praying on your knees Thank you. Thank you for your faith and your trust in an almighty God in heaven through the most wickedness and the darkness coming upon this earth. Thank you for standing strong. Thank you for your courage to keep praying and going no matter what, because that is what God wants. And I believe that to the core of my being, folks. Folks, let me be very clear. This was a human catastrophe. This situation in the world, and I realize it's a distraction, but this situation has such national and international ramifications. Our allies just abandon us. The United States of America, our allies just abandon us because of the Biden regime's betrayal of our own people in Afghanistan. Biden and his administrative staff didn't just betray Americans. They betrayed everyone in the world who had a stake in this. All of our allies, Germany, Britain, France, you name it, all who had an interest in this, all who was waiting on America to tell them it's time to go, never got that phone call. It took Biden over 40 hours to answer Boris Johnson's phone calls. This regime is a foreign terrorist 
on domestic soil. And I'm calling for Americans, pure bred Americans to stand up to this tyranny, this satanic Luciferianism. And I am asking you to pray and fast and intercede however you can put donations towards the Nazarene Fund to get the innocent out of harm's way. Start talking to your senators and your congressmen and start making your voices heard more than anything. They better hear us standing and screaming at the top of our lungs right now. This is a human catastrophe. We have become the tail. America has become the horse's ass. And you heard me correctly. We have become the tail of the entire world right now. And do you realize that in the Old Testament, that when we are being cursed by God, we become the tail. When we reap the blessings of God because we are obeying his commandments and we are doing what he commands us to do, we become the head and we become the rulers and the shapers of the earth and the nations of the earth. No, we have become the tail now. Folks, we are so exposed. America is naked before her enemies right now. I don't know what else to say. Our enemies have risen up against us. China has said, too bad, Taiwan. You've just lost your greatest ally. And Taiwan has decided to start trying to band-aid the whole situation by having live drills. Laughable, okay? Laughable. But they don't have the U.S. to back them right now. If we don't stand up for our allies right now, and if we don't become, if we become a two-faced nation right now, we are going to lose all respect and we are going to perish in one hour, folks. We are going to be out of the loop and the tribulation will start immediately, folks. We are so close to these events happening right now. The wicked, the Satanists are pushing this to happen. Happen. This is why they are trying to sacrifice these tens of thousands of human souls in Afghanistan to make this happen. Their blood libel is being poured out upon the earth so that God will judge the nations that are coming against him. Folks, 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 do you see the coup that is happening in the spiritual realm right now? This is terrible. This is absolutely mind boggling what is happening. China, Iran, Turkey, Russia, all of the major players in the region are forming an alliance, an alliance with the Taliban right now. Do you realize this is Ezekiel 38 and 39 forming in the background? All that needs to take place for Bible prophecy to happen right now is Isaiah 17. Israel just basically blew us off as an ally I read in an article that they were just like, don't worry, America, we've got this. We don't need your help anyway. And they started bombing Damascus. Do you realize what just happened within the last four days of this week? Israel went out on her own. She is going to defend herself and she is going to nuke Damascus. Isaiah 17 prophecy is about ready to be fulfilled, folks, unless repentance is had, unless God hears the repentant souls and he turns away his wrath and his anger from the nations of the earth right now. Folks, 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 we are in desperate times right now. I hate being this alarmist. I hate this so passionately, but I cannot stand idly by and watch these things come to pass so quickly.
Things are changing so rapidly right now. It is so hard for me to keep up with the day-to-day -day things, the news that is just coming out with New Zealand and Australia going into lockdowns and they are going into internment camps and they are turning all the unvaccinated into these internment camps and they're filling up right now over in New Zealand. It's just getting worse and worse and worse right now. Folks, 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 please don't be discouraged by what horrible, wicked things are happening right now because our hope is in Yeshua. We know that he's coming back for his bride and for her, his, her entourage. This whole group of people is about ready to leave the earth. You want to be on board with this group. The only way you're going to be listed as parts and members of this group to go to heaven with Yahweh for the marriage of the Lamb is to be as close to God as you possibly can. And the only way you can do that is through prayer and through fasting and getting to know Yeshua and Yahweh in heaven and by them getting to know you through your communication with them. You're talking, you're praying, you're pouring out of your spirit to him of everything, repenting of all of your sins and asking him for his forgiveness. These things are occurring so quickly right now, and I think this is just going to get more intense as the weeks go on right now. Right now, we are looking at Biden. He is a derelictic Okay, he's derelict in his duty as commander in chief. He is coward in chief right now. He is bailed out on everybody, went to Delaware, went home to hide in his basement so he could get a nap, so he could come back and tell you a bunch of more lies on live TV. I couldn't believe the statement that he made when he came out later on this evening. The 25th Amendment is going to be, I bet you, Within the next few weeks, a Congress and the Senate are out on vacation, whatever it is, the hell that they do on their break. They need to get their butts back in and they need to start doing their job, which the taxpayers are funding them and their little trips to the Bahamas or wherever they go on their vacation. And they need to get back to work and they are going to invoke the 25th Amendment. They're going to get Biden out. I guarantee that Kamala is not going to be the next president. What are they going to do right now? What is being fostered upon us? Kamala can't do this. Folks, in my humble opinion right now, she cannot laugh her way into the presidency and laugh her way through all of these international situations that are being put on her. She will absolutely crumble. They will put her in a straitjacket and they will escort her to the nearest hospital because she will not be able to handle the pressures, the international pressures that are going to be upon the American political spectrum right now. Our allies have abandoned us. Our enemies are licking their lips ready to come and invade us right now. You have no idea how naked we are as a people, as a country before our enemies. What Biden has done, Joe Biden has done, has completely changed the geography of the entire political spectrum, of the entire world, of every nation, of everything. Folks, this is it. Do you understand what just happened? Joe Biden single-handedly changed our national security situation right now. We are at the most vulnerable America has ever been in her entire life right now. Folks, 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 if you aren't preparing your food, if you aren't preparing your shelters, if you aren't getting out of the cities, if you aren't doing what you need to do to safe case your family and your ability to survive what is coming. Folks, I am telling you, Psalms 106, it's happening. Folks, you can't pee in the face of God and expect to get away from it. And that is exactly what this regime has done. It has flipped the finger at God and said, we don't give a dang about you. And we are going to do what we want to do and get what we want 
from our 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 handlers our god our tiny little gods called the ccp and it's just so bad folks i don't think most americans realize just how bad it is right now for those of you who have ever watched the movie the 80s movie um with patrick swayze that was such a good movie and it was so well done um red dawn and it was about the infiltration of the Chinese and the Russian armies coming in and taking over the United States and people holding out in Kansas and Nebraska, basically. And basically a bunch of kids taking back America. It may come to that, folks. It may come to our children taking back this country. But this country's gone right now. I've never. This is the nail in the coffin. This sealed our fate, folks. This has sealed it. As far as our spiritual existence, this is going to rely on our children. The children that are going to be left behind after the debris that has been blown away by the absolute destruction of this generation has done to this country this is the nail in the coffin, folks. We've ruined it. All of our allies have abandoned us. We have no hope to dig ourselves out of our indebtedness to the nations. We have zero, zero things to barter and trade with the nations we don't have rare earth minerals like Afghanistan does with lithium. We don't have these things that are natural in our environment. We have nothing to bring to the table to bring us back into the foray, into the front of the line. We have become the horse's ass, folks. Let's just talk about the Department of Defense and the heightened terrorism alerts that are now engaged within this country. Jihad has been declared by the Taliban on America. Do you realize that Jihad has been declared on us because they have told us that if you don't get every single one of your people, your Americans and all your informants and all of these people out of our country by September 11th, the 20th year anniversary, if you don't get all of your people out by now, you will be sorry. We will come after you and we will destroy you. That is jihad. They have declared jihad on America, folks. Our time is ticking right now. Okay, so let's take a back step. The Fed has just froze all of the bank accounts coming out of Afghanistan. We've confiscated, um, I forgot what it was, like $3 billion worth of gold. It could have been $3 trillion. I can't even remember now. Reading so many headlines right now. Basically, we've stopped the money flow back and forth out of Afghanistan. Big deal. Okay, you've got the biggest superpower now, China and Russia and now Iran is backing Afghanistan. They're pulling their weight and they are saying Biden's regime is negotiating with the Taliban. Let's keep them at the table. So far, they've been able to collect over three billion dollars worth of super technology with Blackhawks, um, with uh Thousands and thousands of guns and rounds of ammunition. God only knows how much technology and weapons were left behind. We'll never know. It was a gift offering. And I'm going to go back to what I said during my previous video today. And that this literally was a sacrifice. You only take gifts and a blood human living sacrifice to the altar and then you kill the sacrifice and you give all of your gold and your silver and all of that to them, to your false gods. And you pray for a bountiful, um, you pray for whatever it is you're praying for, victory in some circumstance. That's what's happening here, folks. The 
tens of thousands of civilians, American and Afghanis, who are both in trouble with the Taliban, who want nothing to do with the Taliban or Sharia law. Um, you have them as a living sacrifice, and you have all of these gifts of super high technology, of weapons, and just everything that they need to reconquer the entire country again. Folks, what else could this be? Am I wrong in saying that this is a human sacrifice and quoting from the Bible that this has been done in previous times in the past, in the ancient history? We are witnessing this once again. So let me reiterate before I make this the longest rant probably in my time here on YouTube and just talking about these prophetic things happening, they will remove Joe Biden from office right now. The question is, Kamala Harris is not capable of taking over the problems that this country has already created for itself internationally. What is going to take place next? Folks, if you aren't prepared for the terrible things that are coming up on the face of this earth right now, you need to be prepared. First and foremost, you need to be reconciled to Yahweh, our Father in heaven, for all of the sins that you've committed against him, committed against your brothers and sisters, your fellow neighbors in this world, against yourself. And your consciousness needs to be cleansed of all of the terrible things you've done to be able to forgive yourself for the terrible things that you have done in this world. And that's been done to you. It's a trade-off, folks. No one gets out of this. Everybody tangos together, folks. Sin just doesn't incorporate one person. It is all of us. We all have to come together in repentance and pray for this nation right now, folks. We have but a small period of time left. I believe this to the core of my being right now. We have a small chance to turn this around, but it's fading very quickly. Folks, there are dark things happening behind the scenes right now in basements and in very high places. Do you remember in the Old Testament where it talks about how in Ezekiel, the Lord took Ezekiel around to all of these places. And do you see how all of these women, her weeping for Tammuz, you know, it's disgraceful in the eyes of the Lord. And then he took him and showed him in this dark room where all of these people were worshiping, you know, these false idols in his presence. God goes, his eyes go everywhere. He sees all the evil and the wickedness. We have a duty to expose it to the light and to bring it to justice. That is our responsibility as mankind made in the image and likeness of God is to expose darkness and wickedness and evil wherever it lies. All right, folks, I'm going to wrap this up. I want to make it short and sweet. We are getting very close to the Lord's return. Is it, is it ironic that this year is a Shemitah year where God commands all of his faithful, not just Israel, folks. Israel, people get so thrown off. Christians get so thrown off in the Bible when it, when God declares Israel being the number, numero uno, the number one that he goes to, uh, to, they are the ones that have got to do all this. No, he's pointing at you. You have got to obey my word. You follow me. These are my rules. This is my house. And if you're in my house, 
you obey my rules. That's what God is saying. That is what Yahweh is saying. You don't get to enter into his house until you have proven that you can obey his rules. The bride, the bride of Christ must obey these rules more than the people of God. Let that be a Shabbat lesson to most of us right now, okay? This is one of the most disturbing articles I think I have read out of the entire week. <laughs> this has just been a week from hell. And I am so sorry that I have to be the bad news bearer in this horrible, horrible week. I am so glad I started out this video, this newscast, with all the blessings that are happening right now unbeknownst to the majority of people because nobody knows what these small Christian groups are doing to save our brothers and sisters right now. So this is one of the most horrible articles I think I have read probably ever on this channel. Jordan and Israel have signed an agricultural agreement for Shemitah year. Okay, let me first very clearly state that God is very specific about Shemitah. Now the Jews and their little Talmud and all their little rabbis and everything they want to wrap up and say that, oh, well, this great rabbi and Mammonides and Rambam this and blah, blah, that. And, you know, you can just say all you want about man and throw it all in the ditch and set it on fire and it's okay with me because what the word of God says is that you will not sow and you will not reap and you will not prune and you will not harvest in the seventh year. Okay, let me be very clear about this. Also, you will set your slaves free. You will let go of all of your debts to all of your debtors and your debtees and blah, 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 blah. Everything goes back to equal at this time. Everything gets to rest. Everything gets a break from the chaos of trying to survive in this world. The idea, and I've been doing, this is my second Shemitah, okay? I'm a newbie here. I still got a voice. And I'm going to say what I'm going to say because that's my right as a child of God. Shemitah to me is I'm going to grow my food just like the Bible said, just like it's spelled out. And this year you're going to plant and you're going to get this amount and you're going to set that amount back. And this year you're going to do this and you're going to do that. Okay. He lists the whole thing all the way up to the sixth year. The sixth year you're going to reap an abundance of food to where if you are obeying me in my Shemitah year and you keep the seventh year rest, I am going to bless you. And I am going to provide such a blessing to you of food that you are going to store food for three more years after this. So when you start to reap again in the eighth year or the first year, however you want to look at that, you are still going to be having plenty of food on your plate through that whole year. Folks, as it stands right now, our cupboards are bare. Our pantries are almost empty. If you haven't been preparing for these days well in advance and been listening to the Lord God Almighty in heaven, you are going to be sorely sorry this time next year because... Um, You've got a lot to contend with. There's the grand solar minimum. La Nina is in effect. There are crop shortages all over the place. If you haven't started preparing your household to preserve food right now, you are going to be in the bread lines. You are going to be the ones given the opportunity to take the mark of the beast. And I guarantee that 90% of you are going to take the mark of the beast because you're fearful for your life in this world where you should be laying down your life in this world for the world to come 
Folks, Shemitah is so important to all of us because it represents our stewardship on the earth. It represents our ability to take care of not only the land and the plants that grow upon the land, but to be husbandry, to take care of the livestock that, you know, through permaculture, you were able to understand how to fertilize the land and how to rotate your crops and how to rotate your your animals so that you are getting the abundance of the land in God's time frame. Okay, so let me get to this article before I close because this is so important. Jordan and Israel sign agricultural agreement for Shemitah year. This agreement in a meeting between the agricultural minister Oded Forer and his Jordanian counterpart Rasan Al-Mashali on the border between the countries on Tuesday. Shemitah is the biblical commandment for the land of Israel to lie fallow every seven years and Jewish farmers in most of modern Israel must observe it for their protest to be certified kosher. Let me digress right now. Almost every single Jew you ask right now who, who is asked, I'm in such and such country in such and such state. Should I be observing Shemitah year? No, you're not in Israel. You don't, you're exempt. You don't need to observe this. Do you know why they say that? Is because they're relying on what they term you as a Gentile. Even though you may be a Jew, you're still termed as a Goyim. You're still termed as a Gentile because you don't live in the land of Israel. And so it's only the land of Israel where Shemitah is observed. I will tell you right now that is a lie from hell. These people lie through their teeth. God is a God of all of the earth. He rules all all of the earth. He is the one who set up the pillars of the earth. He set up the foundation, the firmament. He rolled the firmament up on the pillars of this earth. He made the earth. Everything belongs to him that is in the earth. And so what applies to Israel applies to all his creation, all the earth, all creation must rest on the seventh year. Can I be any more clearer? Okay. Continuing on. One solution Israel has found is to purchase produce from neighboring Arab populations. Other solutions, which are preferred by many religious Zionists, include symbolically selling their land to a Gentile or moving their farms from private to collectively owned for the Shemitah year. Otherwise, quote unquote, basically that land never gets rest. But in these fake Jews minds, they think that, oh, we can pull the wool and the sheep over God's eyes. That's okay. He'll never know. We just give it to their next door neighbor. He's a Gentile and he'll farm the land for us and give us what we want. And, and the land don't rest, but that's okay. You know, it's all right. God don't know. God don't know any of this stuff. Bull crap. Okay. Let me just be very clear right now. I'm just so fired up these days. I hate all of this lies. I hate all of this, this double speak, this, this let's replace our thoughts for God's most holy and high thoughts about us. Let's place it, replace it with our greediness, our, our, our sinful natures. And let's be truly honest, that land never saw rest. No matter whether you decided you were going to get a rest, that land never got rest. God is not mocked. He is not ignorant. You are on God's first page for judgment. Okay? Let me be very clear. God did not withhold 
all of the years that Israel withheld the Sabbath rest of the lands, he held them back. Okay, he collected every year they didn't keep Shemitah. He held that wrath back. He tucked it away into his little fanny pack, whatever he's got up there, a vial, whatever it is he's using. He tucked that away and he's like, yeah, you just keep on disobeying me. I'm going to keep tucking those seven years into my back and you are going to pay for every single one of them at the end when I give you to your enemies, you're going to pay me back. You're going to pay back the land, everything that the land is owed, because that land needs rest. And it's going to get rest for all the years you've stolen from the land. That's what God said. That is what is scriptural. That is in the Bible. Now think about it. Think about this agreement that was just made between Jordan and Israel, okay? And think about the seven-year tribulation that's coming. I can't make this any much clearer to you. I know I'm like totally jazzed up right now. This stuff excites me to the highest level because this is so anti-godly. And so off the charts, just everybody's like, praise the out of one side of their mouth. And they're just like, yeah, well, we're just going to do it this way on the other side of their mouth. And they're going to get what they want when they want it because their appetite is for this world. They can't see past their own lust for this world and the things of it. They are a part of this world. They are not separated. They are not come out of her. So they are going to partake of her sins. And you better well guarantee it that you, dear listener, if you don't come out of her, my people, you are going to partake of her sins. This whore that is on the face of the earth right now, she is about ready to gain absolute power. And guess who's going to take it from her when he arises, that little horn. Oh, yes, it is all coming to pass right now. On, okay, so I have basically not really leased out, but I was just like, this land is just laying here. And I've known these people who have owned this land here in Alaska and they are friends to me and I asked them you're not using the land this year can I use this land to do this for you know my Shemitah year I could have used this land for the next probably like two or three years but I'm not going to of course it's been a terrible year to grow crops where I live in Alaska. In some parts of Alaska, especially up in the Talkeetna Valley, it's been wonderful. In places like Willow, they have some of the biggest heads of cabbage I have ever seen in my life. But there are other places in Alaska, like where I live, it has rained and not have seen sun for weeks on end, I think the highest we've ever seen in temperature was 75 degrees one day. It was the highest temperature it got in the area I was at. And that was when the sun was shining. It was hot as heck. And that's it. My crops have not been as near as much as I have prayed for them to be. They are still growing because of the heirloom seeds that I did purchase because they were cold weather crops, so they are struggling through the cold weather. I'm getting a small bounty, but I'm still getting a bounty out of it. And I guarantee you that by the time I'm able to harvest this, even if it's after the Shemitah year begins at Rosh Hashanah, even if it's the last head of cabbage that I collect at the end of September after Sukkot, even if it's at the end when the ground begins to freeze and all of the crops need to be harvested in, and that's the end of the harvest period, that is the 
time period where I am not going to harvest again until that next season after that year. So technically, I'm going to go through all of 2022. It's going to be 2021, the fall of 2021, all the way through the fall of 22, all the way through spring of 2023, when I can start harvesting again, when I can start growing and pruning and sowing and clipping and doing all the things that I need to do. This is what God said that he would do. For those who believe in him, he is going to provide for you. Those who are going to obey his word, he is going to provide for you in those three years after Shemitah that you have to have food. He knows this. And he said, if you obey me, I will give you these three years of abundance so you will not go hungry. You may not be getting cheeseburgers and all kinds of stuff that you want, but you're not going to go hungry, okay? And God promises that. So that's not what's going on here in this Jordanian and Israeli agreement that is being made for Shemitah and to bypass God's laws here. Um, for Forer and Majali met at the Allenby Bridge along with the ambassadors of the two countries. They agreed for Israel to import Jordanian Jordanian produce in the coming years. The agricultural ministry said it would diversify the sources of fruit and vegetables for those who keep kosher and take advantage of benefits in the trade agreements between the two countries. The ministers also discussed ways to partner on innovation and technological advances in agriculture as well as fighting disease in plants. They also discussed fighting fires in both countries and the role farmers can play, blah, 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 blah. It goes on and on and on. I will let you read the rest of this in the description box below. It's called JerusalemPrayerTeam.org. Everybody thinks this is an awesome, cool idea. I think this is a sentence to hell on earth. So, I mean, pick your poison right now. You've got people praising this new prime minister, Naftali Bennett, and, uh, you know, defense minister, Benny Gantz, who's meeting with the King Abdullah, and the foreign minister, Yara Lapid, and they're making all of these wonderful uh, deals with each other, water in exchange for, yeah, you can grow our produce for us since, you know, we still want fresh vegetables and all this stuff during Shemitah when God said, no, don't do that. I am teaching you how to live off of the land and you are circumventing my laws and folks, can I tell you right now that this is what I believe that the famine, the black horse that rides during the seven year tribulation, this is the, the, the black horse who's carrying the balances in his hands. He's not just balancing the wheat and how much it costs. He's balancing men's souls and how much it's cost the earth to keep that human soul in the state that it is, okay? That's a very scary thought right there. Folks, I am so fired up these days, and it's getting really intense. I really want to leave you with a good place. Folks, there are people like you and me who are outside of these little circles who are making things happen for holiness and we are doing it with a contrite heart. And people are coming together in mass. And they are clinging to the word of God. So folks, don't forget that in the end of days, people are going to realize we're being stupid. We are going against what God said to do. And they are going to turn. And they are going to go back to their fathers. And the teachings that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob continued to preach and teach their children through all of human history, even unto this day, folks. I truly believe now, more than at any time in my life, that God is looking on the hearts of you and me. And He is weighing our hearts in those balances. And He's wondering... 
what we're choosing, whom we're choosing in these last days, these last moments leading up to the end of this age. Who are we listening to? Who are we implementing those words into our life? And we're following that structure. Whose structure are we following? I pray to you that I hope it's Yahweh's laws and his structure and his kingdom that you are following because Yahweh Yeshua told us, seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added unto you. Folks, please get right with Yahweh. Please turn your hearts to the one true God, the Almighty in heaven. He sent his only begotten son to die for us, to redeem us of our sins. We have this ability to be reconciled with our father in heaven and to live with him for all eternity so he can show us how to live and how to live abundantly and how to live joyfully and how to reap all of those those wonderful things that he wants us to enjoy let us choose today whom we shall serve for all eternity and let it be Yahweh in heaven our most holy God the one and only Almighty Yahweh, Yeshua, and Ruach HaKodesh. Praise Yah for them all. Thank you, Lord Yah, for getting out all of the innocent people from Afghanistan by all of the faithful followers of you. Praise Yah Most High. Maranatha, everyone. Keep looking up. He is coming. Prepare your hearts.